What's it like playing Trivial Pursuit and having a question about yourself? Isn't that cool? I have that card. I stole it. I I saw the card and I thought, oh, the lead singer of the Zit Remedy. And, and um, I flip it over and it's Joey Jeremiah. I also have somewhere um, a crossword puzzle that was in the newspaper where they used my last name. Uh, and I can't remember the question. Maybe it was just Canadian actor on a children's television show. And if you can get Mastroianni, uh, good for you. <laughs> That's great. Um, there, you 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 mentioned Joey Jeremiah's clothes. You want people to come to the expo dressed up as Joey Jeremiah. He's iconic for his hat, but his shirts and vests were incredible as well. Do you have any of those original garments? You know what? I donated a lot of them over the years. Um, many went to charity auctions. Um, I unfortunately only have the fedora that uh, they let me have um, after the Next Generation episode, my reunion episode in the Next Generation. Uh, but the ones from way back when, no, I, I do have some um, cast and crew items like a Degrassi jacket that they gave us as an end of year present. Um, th small things like that. Uh, but I would love to have kept one of those old fedoras. Who knew that it would be so important you know, to, to have those um, artifacts from, from you know, I, I honestly didn't think the show would have the kind of longevity that it has uh, today, 30, 35 years later, I certainly wasn't expecting a reunion uh, series that lasted 17 seasons. Um, so, yeah, I mean, these are just things that we didn't think of back in the day. They were kept in apple boxes uh, or no uh, milk crates, milk crates uh, back in the day. Um, you would just walk in and you know, it would say, grab your costume out of the milk crate. And that's what you would do. It, it really wasn't anything special back then. All right. I would like you to answer this one immediately if you can. What's the first character you think of? Of what? What character? What show? What are we first talking about? First Degrassi character, junior high. Give me one. Give me the character. First one. Wheels. Yeah, like wheels. wheels. For those uh, who don't know, he, he passed away, unfortunately. Um, and, you know, we, we honor him anytime we do an appearance. Degrassi Palooza, we honored him. Uh, we had a guest book that fans uh, that attended Degrassi Palooza got to sign out and say a, a little thank you to him or a little message to him. And that uh, book was donated to the University of Toronto where there's a Degrassi archive. And basically that is part of the Degrassi archive now. So we always pay tribute to Neil when we can. Uh, I love the fact that when fans... Uh, see pictures that I post on social media of the Zip Remedy. They always say R.I.P. Wheels or R.I.P. Neil. They always pay tribute to him, which is lovely. And uh, he's definitely not forgotten. One of the most iconic scenes in the history of the show was Joey Jeremiah streaking naked down the hallway. I have it on a button. What do you remember about that day? I remember being terrified. I remember being pissed that I had to do it. Because the producers basically said, no, you have to do this because we believe Joey would go that far to get his beloved car, the down payment for his car. I go, yeah, but I don't want to do it. And the producer was basically like, yeah, but you got to do it because we, you know, we, we've written it and, we, you know, and back then there was a lot of, um, I don't know what the word is, but. Uh, they had this power over us and they would make us do things that we wouldn't necessarily normally do. Um, and when I went to my parents to say, look, they're, they're trying to get me to do the scene where I walk naked. My mom was like, yes, do it. It'll be funny. Do it. What are you complaining about? You have a very nice tush. Um, so at the end of the day, and this is, an, this is very serious. At the end of the day, I wanted to be taken as a serious actor. I wanted to know what my limits were. How far was I willing to go to play a character? Was I going to allow my fears to stop me from doing a, a, a part that I wasn't comfortable with? And at the end of the day, I wanted to be a better actor. I wanted to be somebody that was willing to take risks. And for me, that was the ultimate risk to be naked in front of a hundred people. Um, and at the end of the day, at the end of the day, they were very respectful to me. They were very kind and, and sensitive to, to me. Um, and, and it is a hilarious scene. It is very funny and it'll go down in Degrassi uh, history. Uh, but in the moment, in the scene, I was just scared to death. Very interesting. <laughs> um, Pat, well, so speaking, I mentioned the buttons, but here, did you make this? See. Oh, nice. That's an old one. Yeah. Did you make that yeah. one? Hold on. I've, I've upgraded since then. <laughs> I've upgraded, my friend. Please. That was Mickey Mouse styles back in the day. Look at this sucker now. What? Oh, I won't focus. That's a, a picture of us on set. 
that's a picture of us on set that I that a friend of mine took with, with my camera, and I just had it done on an enamel pin, which uh, I'll have at uh, Sass Saskatoon Expo uh, this weekend. That's awesome. Um, during the pandemic, I did a bracket of the greatest Canadian theme songs of all time. My personal choice was Degrassi Junior High, but it lost in the very first round to local favorite Corner Gas. Uh, one person wrote me to say, quote, the results of this disgust me. How do you feel about uh, Degrassi not even getting out of the first round of the greatest Canadian theme songs? I'm surprised not the first round, but I actually um, voted for Littlest Hobo, um, Mr. Dress Up. Uh, yeah, I mean, we have some classics, right? Uh, it definitely is a memorable, catchy tune. It's not as catchy as the Zit Remedy tune. Uh, that has definitely become a bit iconic. I think it's been covered by at least a dozen bands that I know of. Uh, Everybody Wants Something is just a classic, and I don't know why it's not in the Canadian Music Hall of Fame, to be honest. I agree. Yeah, let's make Absolutely. that happen. Don't you know somebody? <laughs> I don't. Uh... I don't. <laughs> Pat, do you have, did you hear, Pat, do you hear any uh, wild Degrassi conspiracy theories ever? No, <laughs> no, uh, I don't know of any. Um, do you? Uh, do I got one for you right now. You want to hear it? Go ahead. Sure. So I have a Degrassi conspiracy theory that I've talked about for years. Uh, Degrassi Junior High, season three, episode 16, Bye Bye Junior High, the final episode in 1989. So Joey and Caitlin split up mid-episode. They get back together at prom as Joey's standing at the bottom of a stairwell with flowers waiting for Caitlin. But... Before she comes down the stairs and they reunite, a younger student runs between them, bumping Joey. A rift, you might say. Do you remember who that was? Scooter? It was Tessa Campanelli. And my theory is that this is incredible foreshadowing to schools out three years later when uh, Tessa Campanelli, of course, literally plays a role in breaking up Joey and Caitlin. Any thoughts on my conspiracy theory? That is amazing. I love that. I mean, that's the kind of detail that only a, a true fan would know. Um, because we have things like that that happen at conventions where people come up to us with, with quirky things that they noticed. And, and of course, we wouldn't remember. Um, I love that. I mean, that, I'm going to have to mention that to Stacy next time I see her, or at least find the footage so I can watch it. Uh, but that is very, very cool. I mean, also, if you watch the scene where Joey walks through the cafeteria naked, Tessa is in the foreground staring at him when he's naked, and she's quite impressed with what she's seen. So I think there's also a little foreshadowing in that scene uh, that the Tessa is going to, you know, be into the Joey. <laughs> well, I love it. That's great. I've been telling everybody who will listen that theory for years, my friend. I love it. I think it's a great theory. And <laughs> yeah, I go can't... watch that. Every time I see that scene, it, it's it's a literally, she literally breaks through you guys. Yeah, I love it. Uh, Pat, last oh, time we... Hey, oh, before what? you go to the next question, do you want to know another cool thing about that scene with the fire? Please. In, the, uh, in Canada, I think it was, um, the credits started to roll up before Joey Jeremiah actually came out of the, the, the school. So people were freaking out going, where's Joey? Where's Joey? And you didn't get to see Joey and Caitlin actually hug. Uh, that he was safe outside of the school and uh, either it went to commercial or the credits covered it up and you couldn't see it. So fans weren't even sure if Joey was going to be alive for the next season of uh, season one of Degrassi High. And believe it or not, I was considering moving to Los Angeles um, because I just won a Gemini Award and, you know, fast talking agents were trying to get me to move down there and be an actor in L.A., and so I'd actually gone down and was considering leaving the show to pursue a career in Los Angeles. So I think the producers had caught wind of that and weren't sure if I was going to come back or not. So they kept it open just in case I didn't return for the first season of Degrassi High. So I guess Joey would have just gotten crispy in the school if I didn't come back. <laughs> We're glad that didn't happen, but that is an incredible story. That is so cool. Uh, that would have been quite the cliffhanger. Yeah. All right, Pat. Last time we talked, we did a little trivia. You got four out of five right. You're ready to give it a try again and see if you can get perfect this time? Give her. Let's see. So last time we did this, the only question you got wrong, I'm going to ask you again, see if you remember. <laughs> what character shares a name 
with a rock band from Maryland. And here's a fun fact. They literally just played in Saskatoon last night. What character? Shares a name with a rock band from Maryland. Maryland. I don't know. I don't know. I can't okay. remember. It was six years ago last time I asked you. It's Clutch. Oh, Clutch. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. It's a very good band. Um, what brand of condoms does Joey buy? Latex. No. Latex? Oh, Life Brand. I don't know. Chic. Oh, CG. Which one? Chic. Chic. Man, as you get older, my friend, you just <laughs> get foggier and foggier up here. Um, this is why I don't act anymore. I can't remember anything. <laughs> I think okay. the first guess was fine. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah, all right. Yeah. I don't think so, those exist anymore, so it's okay. I haven't even started drinking yet, Peter. I mean, this is like, it's only four o'clock, but catch me in a couple hours. Wait, wait, see what happens. That's when all the memories will come rolling back, actually. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, let's see how well you know your girlfriend. What does Caitlin write about in an investigative journalism piece for the uh, Degrassi Digest? Do you remember the topic she writes about? I, I want to say something to do with factories and pollution and, and saving the environment. So close, um, very close. We'll give you that one. It's about uh, animal rights, but she does go to like a warehouse, like a factory there. Yeah. I wasn't even close with animal rights, but yeah, I well. giving me a, throwing me a bone on my Degrassi trivia. Uh, but yeah, in that episode, she eventually goes with Claude to uh, break in or do something, spray paint uh, the walls of a, yeah, she's right. trying to get, that's right. Okay, so that's actually in high. Yeah, the one, uh, the animal rights was in junior high. Good. So there you go. So you're right. Uh, you just, I didn't clarify which season. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> uh, Pat, this one you'll get for sure. Who is the often forgotten fourth member of the Zit Remedy? Simon. Simon. He was going to jam with us, and uh, I think Wheels was able to come back uh, into the band, so we didn't need Simon anymore. But I thought he would have been a great addition. We needed a drummer too, though. We never even had a drummer in that band. <laughs> BLT would have been cool. I Google stuff from time to time because I get bored. I've been stuck in my house for three years. So what do you do when you're, you know, chilling? You look up things like the Zits. This is a real band from the States. Wow. And they came out in 81 before the Zit Remedy. And this album is called Back in Blackhead. And it's phenomenal. But look at that. He's wearing a fedora. Isn't that trippy? That's amazing. And so, um, yeah, I had to buy this album just because it's so cool. Um, you may find it on eBay or find it, but there's an actual band uh, from the States that were called The Zits back in 1981. I thought that was really neat. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Last question for you, Pat. You played a, oh. a role in a feminist horror film. It was directed by Lucy Fernandez. Do you remember the name of the film? Yeah, It Creeps. Best horror movie ever. That okay. episode actually gave me nightmares as a kid. <laughs> it was a lot of fun filming that episode because they actually let us use uh, that same camcorder that we would do the behind the scenes uh, footage that I used in my documentary. That camera was on set for a couple of years. Uh, we, we actually shot uh, scenes ourselves that ended up being in the show. So, you know, when, when Lucy was saying action and the character was holding the camera, we were actually filming those scenes ourselves that ended up being part of the movie uh, in, in, in the episode, which is a lot of fun because again, nobody had camcorders unless you were very wealthy. Um, these things were, were luxury items. So for us to actually be able to film stuff ourselves, it was a lot of fun and to have, to have a studio in your, in your hand was just now it's, it's in everybody's pocket, right? So, um, yeah, it's just a throwback to nostalgia. Well, this is a lot of fun, too, Pat. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Before we go, if I can just plug Saskatoon Expo one more time. Uh, all I wanted to say about the event that's happening this weekend, uh, May 5th to the 7th, is that you don't have to be into Joey Jeremiah from Degrassi or any of the other guests that we're having on the show. Um, this is a, a celebration of nostalgia. It's a celebration of pop culture. It's a family friendly event. You can come and there's tons of artists that you can meet. Some are independent, some are famous. Um, you can also meet really cool artisans that create one of a kind items that you just can't find anywhere else. It's a great way to, to spend a day indoors um, but it's a whole weekend event. You can come back for, for many days if you want. I highly recommend you go to saskexpo.com if you're interested in getting tickets early so you don't have to wait in line uh, and buy tickets at the door. So I hope to see you there. It'll, it'll be a, a great time uh, if you do.